Morning. Art Hostage here, and we're going to do another episode. Now, this is the 30th of March, 2022. Okay, and it's two years, right, today, right, that Niles Manara smashed the glass door at the Lorem Museum in the Netherlands and stole, right, Van, a Van Gogh painting, an early Van Gogh, right, it's rectangle, right, and he made up, made off with it today, two years ago, right, so I want to tell you my story, right, of, of how I sort of got involved in um, this whole saga, right, now, let's pull the chair up, right, we'll start, right, in January 2020, Right now, Arthur Brand, right, has been making his TV series, and it's going to be series two. But there was al already a lot of questions being raised about series one and the recoveries that he was making. Right, no, no one was ever getting arrested. Right, and monies were being paid by insurance companies and victims. Right, now he knew this uh, that people were going to say stuff. Right, but because he attacks people, now what he did for years, he just used to attack people, attack their family, make threats. He used to make ridiculous accu accusations. There was a journalist called Hank Shutton, right, um, who wrote an article about Arthur Brand, right, when he uh, he he sold he, he sold right two looted antiquities, right, from Turkey. I think they come from. One was a lamp and another one was something else, right? And when they got arrested by Scotland, when they, um, when they, when it came on top, right, Arthur Brand and Michelle Van Ryan, right, to stop them getting arrested, they offered to become police informants but wanted witness protection. Now, Hank Shutton wrote this article for Het Parole, right? And, um, and when he wrote this article, right, Arthur Brand went crazy. Right, he phoned up the editor of Het Parole, right, um, something like 35 times one day, right, and he attacked Hank Shutton's family, right, he, uh, he made accusations of, like, um, sexual abuse going on in the family, right, and literally, it was crazy what he did, and poor old Hank Shutton, right, he had a nervous breakdown, and he had to give up his um, journalist career, right, for a number of years until he recovered, right, and I think he's recovered now, right, but he has never got back to where he was before the... Arthur Brand encounter, okay, now I had the same thing with Arthur Brand and Chris Marinello joined in as well, they tried to attack me and do the same to me, but um, you, well, you know me, I've got a skin like a rhinoceros, you know what I mean, I don't care, skin like an alligator, a crocodile, okay, they can throw whatever they want at me, the kitchen sink and, and you know, and more, right, um, Anthony Amora and Chris Marinello, right, got Sussex police to investigate me twice, for alleged uh, malicious communications, and and each time they said there's no evidence of that whatsoever, right? So I mean I won't be intimidated, as you as you probably know, right? You you know you probably know that um you know I don't care I shoot from the lip and I don't care who it is, right? Whether it's criminals, whether it's um, law enforcement, insurance company, so called art detective, I don't care who it is. I tell it how it is. I tell the truth, right? And if they don't like it, well I'm sorry, you know we well, don't listen. Right, that's all I say. Right, so let's get to the uh, Van Gogh theft, right? January 2020, right? Arthur Brand knows that his uh, season two of his art detective series is coming out in the September of 2020, right? He also knows, right, that he wants to try and sell Hitler's Horses, which is another story we'll go into, right, which hasn't ended yet. He's trying to sell that, right, to MGM, right, to make a movie. So now he sits down with Octave Durham in January, right, and Niles Minara, okay, the art thief, right, and Michelle Van Ryan, okay, and they come up, they hatch a plan. Now, the plan is that um, Niles Minara is going to steal, right, the Van Gogh, right, that's um, going to be on loan, or it's on loan, right, at the Lorem Museum, right, it belongs to the uh, Groningen Museum, but they they loaned it out to the Lorem Museum. Now the thing about the Lorem Museum, it's got a glass front and just a glass door. So literally, with a sledgehammer, you're straight through the door, run through to the gallery where the Van Gogh is. Right? It's only a little small thing, right? And so you could stick it under your arm and you run out and you'd be out in like less than two minutes, right? Three minutes maximum, right? So now this is um, January. Now I'm still talking to Arthur Brand at this time. Right, we'd had our little fallings out, right, about a few things, right, but we were talking at the time. 
right? And you know what it's like. People can't help themselves, right? And they, and they tend to, um, whether it's on purpose, right, or whether um, they do it without realising, right? They always seem to leave breadcrumbs, you know what I mean? They always seem to leave a lot of little trail. And you know me, right? I'll sniff it out straight away. So anyway, go through January, February, right? We get, right? We get to March, okay? And then bang, March 2020, right? The whole world goes on lockdown, right? No one can believe what's coming down, right? Well, me, it's a busman's holiday, if you know me. I mean, because I just, I don't go anywhere anyway, right? So, I mean, I'm thinking, well, okay, right? But I follow all, I followed all the rules. I've done all of that. You know, even today, right? 30th of March, 2022, Right, I will put on a mask if I go outside the house, right? If I, I'm up on the balcony, right? I don't bother, right? You know, um, you know, if I'm sitting up there for a bit of sunshine and all that game, right? But if I leave the house, I will wear a mask, right? Not only for my own benefit, right? Just to reassure anyone I might encounter, right? Who may be vulnerable or may feel uncomfortable about people not wearing masks, right? So that's why I do it, okay? Follow the rules, right? So now, March 2020, right? We now get to the 30th of March 2020, two years ago today. And then, bang, it's the headlines, right? Thief smashes his way through the Lorem Museum with a sledgehammer, right? He goes in, he steals the Van Gogh under his arm, right? Runs out the museum, right? Jumps on the back of a motorbike and goes off into the night and no one knows what's happened, right? So it's like, oh my goodness. And because it's locked down, it's even worse, right? So now you've, they've got this multi-million pound, multi-million euro, multi-million dollar, multi-million pound Van Gogh, right? Now I, um, it's um, Vicarage and the Parsonage, right? It's an early work by Van Gogh. And if you look at his early works, the price ranges are from about Five, six million dollars, right up to ten, twelve million dollars. And since then, a couple have sold, right? That, um, you, uh, which are comparable, right? And so I would say that the Van Gogh stolen from the Lauren Museum two years ago today is worth ten million dollars, maybe twelve million dollars. So it's all over the news, right? Everywhere, right? New York Times, um, London Times, you know, every single, you know, everyone's talking about it. Right, then all of a sudden, right, two months later, right, so it's March, we go April, sorry, May, and then we hit June, right, and then the next thing, right, in the New York Times front page, Nina Siegel, who is a New York Times reporter, but she lives in Amsterdam, right, in the Netherlands, and she's wrote some articles, right, um, going back a few years about Arthur Brand. I mean, genuine, I mean, she's a genuine reporter, Nina Siegel, right, and on this particular occasion, she was duped. Right, D U P E D. She was duped, right, by Arthur Brand. Right, he got her to publish, right, proof of life of the Van Gogh. Now, you've got to remember, it hasn't been recovered. The back of the painting, right, the inner of the painting, where you take the back off and there's the labels there with all the information that only, that has never been shown in public ever before. And then when you take the, um, wooden back off, right, um, on the actual back of the painting, there's other stuff there that no one would know or could see, so she publishes these photographs in the uh, New York Times, and then the minute they went in there, right, I'm like, I oh, know this is a get up, right, this is a, this is what you call a steal and return, in other words, you steal an iconic artwork, and then you hand it back, either for a ransom, right, that you can get the insurance company to pay, or you hand it back for some other kind of favours, whether it's a, a criminal that's facing a jail sentence and he says, I'll hand it back. I didn't steal it, but I'll hand it back and facilitate its return for um, a lesser jail sentence, right? Now, that's happened in the past, and it happened in, um, in the Netherlands back in the early 90s, right? There was a, um, um, a drug dealer who bought... Um, a Van Gogh, right, and handed it back and got um, a much lower prison sentence and all the criminals in the Netherlands, right, were jumping up and down and saying this is the way forward, right, and don't forget Martin Finkelberg, right, he was still the uh, um, art cop, right, now in 2020 when this happened, right, April, right, I'm not sure whether he was still the cop, right, or he just retired, I think he might have retired a couple of weeks before, he probably knew it was going to happen, anyway, right, and then what happened was the Dutch art cops, um, Right, the um, Dutch art squad, right, they appointed who were the number two who was under Martin Finkelberg, right, Richard Bronswick, 
right? And he's got his floppy hair and all that, and he wants to be, you know, and he wants to be at art exhibitions, you know, and all this kind of stuff, right? Another publicity seeker, a bit like Arthur Brand. So now, of now tumble, what's going on, right? That, that this is all a get up, right? So we move through June 2020, right? We go through July and then August. Then all of a sudden, right, I find myself, right, on a, on a Zoom call with some American producers, right, and Octave Durham, right? Now, Octave Durham, right, was the thief who stole the two Van Goghs from the Van Gogh Museum in 2002. And he sold them... Um, he sold them to Raphael Imperiali, right, the Mafia godfather who lives in Dubai because he's been sentenced to 16, 18 years <clears throat> jail sentence in Italy in abstentia, but he's still living in Dubai because there's no extradition treaty, right, and he's still continuing with um, his multi-billion dollar a year drug cartel, right, he's in it with um, Danny um, Kinahan, right, the Kinahan cartel, Raphael Imperiali, Danny K Daniel Kinahan, right? Anyway, they're they're all in Dubai, right? Haven't been extradited. He actually, Raphael Imperiali got arrested last year, August 2021, right? But a few weeks ago, right, it came out in the press that the um, United Arab Emirates, which is Dubai is part of, right, have refused the extradition order request from Italy, right, um, to for Raphael Imperiali to go back to Italy to serve his sentence. Right, he was in custody. I'm not sure if he's still in custody or he's just been released and he's um just continuing the business um in Dubai. Now, excuse me. <coughs> oh, God, let me have a little drink of water there. Right, here. Oh, that's nice. Ice water, you cannot beat it, right? Now, I've tumbled, right, that there's something dodgy here, right, that's going on. Okay, now what? Um, now what's happened, right? Now through August, right? Now August, I'm on a Zoom call, right, with these American producers, right, and Octave Durham. They want to do a documentary about Octave and all that, and they want me as a consultant about art crime because I know a lot about it and everything. So I got talking, and leading up to the Zoom call, I got it early and was talking to Octave Durham, and then after the Zoom call. Octav and I stayed on the Zoom and we were talking and that and we exchanged um, Skype details, right? He told me his Skype handle or contact n name. I told him mine, you know, it's Art Hostage. Well, what else would it be, right? On Skype. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, right, we're getting to August 2020, right? Now, Octav, right, um, starts, he sent me a couple of messages which he wrote down, right? But he's, um, English, writing-wise, is not that good. And this is, he admits it himself. So he started sending me voicemails, right? Now, they started off at about a minute, and then there was two minutes, and then there was one and a half minutes, and there was, like, about how many of them? There was, like, 30 of them over a, right, over a period of time, from August 2020 right through to 2021. And what he was doing, right, he was trying to send me off the scent a little bit, right, by saying it was the young lads in Leardham that stole the Franz Holes and this, that and the other and the Van Gogh, right. But then he was dropping in little bits of truth, right, when he was saying that when the Van Gogh was stolen, two years today, remind you, he was in hospital and he winked at me, you know, because he'd uh, fake stress, because he knew that he couldn't go on the bit of work with Niles Manara because... He was the 2002 Van Gogh thief, and the police would be banging on his door, right, straight away. So he needed not only a watertight alibi, he needed something, that um, an alibi where he could produce um, CCTV and all this carry-on. So he came up with the plan of being in hospital on the day the Van Gogh got stolen. So now, let's, right, so, so, so we've sitting, so now I've shown you, right, what's been in the press, right, and, and, and what's been going on now, August. We go through August, September, right, so we go through to August. Then all of a sudden in August, right, Octave, right, he's on the um, Skype to me, and I'm writing to him, how are you doing, Octave, right, and then he's sending me voicemails, right, and I can, it sounds like he's in a bar, right, and this is, right, this evening in August, right, the next day, the balloon goes up again, the screen goes up again, there's been a second robbery. Now remember, the Van Gogh was stolen on the 30th of March 2020. Now in August, 
Right, now five days before Arthur Brand's TV series season two starts, and a week before, the Franz Holes, right, goes walkabout, right, down in Leardham, right, for the third time. It's Franz Holes laughing, boys. It's been stolen twice before and twice recovered. Right, now at this time, the thief, right, shinned up the, um, went up a ladder, right, he's got straps, right, he smashed his way in, right, um, he's got the um, Franz Holes laughing, boys, he's lowered himself down on the straps, Again, jumped on the motorbike, right, with the, um, on the back of the motorbike, there's a rider, and he's driven off into the night, right? Now, now all of a sudden, people are going, fuck, you know, what's going on in um, the Netherlands, right? There's two national treasures have been stolen within months, right? So then we're, everyone's speculating and Arthur Brand's trying to, um, you know, he's saying that oh, I can get them back and he's trying to recover the um, Van Gogh before his sick TV series comes out and he's on Twitter and he's on social media and he's on... Um, the TV in the Netherlands saying I can have a deal and I can get this back, but um, you know the person who's got the um, Van Gogh now is a drug dealer who's in jail when he wants a lower sentence and all this, right? We get the Christmas 2021, uh, 2020, right, December, and then we move into January 2021, right? And I've had enough of this, right? Because I know it's all bollocks. So I then, right, I then write the truth about it on Twitter. Well, Arthur Brown goes potty, doesn't he, right? He's nuts completely gone, right? He don't re reckon it one little bit and starts attacking me back, attacking my family, right? Attacking um, my son, my grandchildren, putting photographs of them up there, right? Um, along with Chris Marinello, right? And Anthony Amore, right? So this is January 2021, right? Then February, March, right? Then April 2021, right? The Dutch police arrest Niles Menara. Right, and say they've had him under surveillance, right, hoping that he would take them to the Van Gogh, right, um, but when they realised he wasn't going to do that, they swooped on him and arrested him, so they arrest Niles Manara in April 2021, right, his trial was in September 2021, right, and he was found guilty um, of stealing both the Van Gogh and the Franz Holes, he left forensic evidence, right, at the Franz Holes death, the straps that he used, right, he left his DNA on them, right, and there's some DNA on the uh, frame, right, of the Laughing Boys, right, and I think DNA on the frame of the um, of the Van Gogh, right, which he discarded when he fled with it, right, so he gets found, found guilty, right, and he gets um, eight years in jail, right, so he's weighed off last September, right, now the guy who bought the Van Gogh originally, right, his name is Peter Roy Cock, K-O-K, -K, right, Peter Roy Cock, okay, and he was arrested, right, in July 2020, right, a month after it appeared, right, in the um, New York Times, the proof of life that Arthur Brand provided, okay, and now he's still waiting to come up on trial, Right, he's, so it's, it's going to be like nearly two years, right? Now, when he comes up in trial, they're going to try and have a deal where he hands back the uh, the Van Gogh and maybe the Franz Holes for a, for a lower sentence. Up till now, the authorities and the Minister of Justice at the time was Ferdinand Grappas, right? He went, no, 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 we're not having no deals, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the actual thing, what really happened and how it went down. So Arthur Brand, right? Niles Manara, Michelle Van Ryan, and Octav Durham, right, are all, right, they come up with the plan. The plan is, right, um, that on Van Gogh's birthday, right, the 30th of March, right, they're going to, um, right, Niles Manara is going to go to the Lauren Museum, right, on the back of a motorbike, right, with one of the young lads that Octav Durham's provided, right, and then there's another lookout as well on another motorbike, he gets off the motorbike, right? He goes over to the Lauren Museum and he smashes the door in a similar vein to what Octav Durham smashed the window to get in the Van Gogh heist from 2002. Now, in the meantime, right, Octav Durham is in hospital on the 30th of March 2020 when the Van Gogh gets stolen. Octav Durham is in hospital with fake stress. Okay, and so he's marching up and down in front of all the CCTV cameras, and, you know, and he's making sure that it's all written down, right? So anyway, after it gets, um, after the balloon goes up and the screen goes up the next day, right, um, Octav, right, starts getting driven mad by the police, and he says, I've got 100% airtight, watertight alibi, but the police still don't believe him, 
right? Even though they know that he didn't steal it, they know he's involved in some way, but they, they, they can't work it out. So then what happens, right? Niles Manara gets the bang off, right? And then he goes and he wraps it up and he puts it away. And then what happens is um, Octav Durham sees Niles, right? And then they take photographs of it, okay? The front, the back. They take the back plate out and they take the, the photograph of the back of the bang off and all the information, right? Octav gives those photographs and everything, right, to Arthur Brand. Arthur Brand then contacts Nina Siegel, right, who works for the New York Times but lives in Amsterdam, and she's wrote favourable articles about Arthur Brand and his escapades of recovering stolen art and he's the Indiana Jones and all that sort of carry on. Right, and I still can't understand why anyone would want to be Indiana Jones, right, because he's the one, he steals things from, um, um, he loots things and steals things um, from other countries and everything like that. So really, I think people are getting the wrong end of the stick with Indiana Jones. He's not the hero, right? He's the villain. But it's ironic because actually, in the truth, right, Arthur Brand's not the hero. He's the villain. Right, anyway, so Arthur Brand has got now proof of life, right? Now, we get to June 2020, right? And Nina Siegel gets it published in the New York Times. Now, you've got to remember... Right, this is the first time in history, right, that an, that, um, that an unrecovered, an outstanding stolen artwork has had proof of life printed in, right, in a global newspaper. Because the police, right, but well, they, they don't want that to happen because what happens is it means it becomes a shop window. That anyone who might want to buy it can look at these photographs, right, and say, right, I know what's written on the back of that painting because it's what's in the New York Times on that label and all this carry on. And that is exactly what happens. In June, it gets published in the New York Times, and alongside it, right, the um, proof of life, Octav demanded that his book, he wrote a book called Master Thief, or, or a, a writer wrote the book about him called Master Thief, or Master Criminal, right, in Dutch, right, and he wanted his book to be put next to the actual Van Gogh that's been stolen now. Right, so they did that as well, right? So that's part of the photographs, and Octav's getting in on the act, right? And now he's now he's pretending he's outraged and all this. So's Arthur Brand says, I took it personally and all that. Were you they were the ones who organized it. Anyway, Peter Roy Cock, right, is part of a drug gang, right, in um Amersfoort, right? He owns a trucking company, right? A transport company. And he's been making um, trips, you know, smuggling drugs to the UK and smuggling them into um, the Netherlands, right, for, for donkey years, for years, right? He got captured and I think he served a jail sentence, right? And then he got released, right? And he appealed against it, right? And he was released on while he was waiting for his appeal. Well, the Dutch police, right, uh, were the first, they cracked this Encro chat, right, which is encrypted phone calls, right, it's, which all the drug dealers use. Right, and all criminals and people who don't want anyone, you know, encrypted telephones, right? They cost like £1,500 or like 2000 um a, a month, right? That's what it is, right? right or like $2,000 a month after you've bought and bought the handsets, right? Encro chat, right? Now, what happened is, is the Dutch police cracked it, right? And so they're getting all kinds of... um um intelligence on Peter Roy Cock and his fellow drug importers and exporters, conspirators, right? And, oh, and the, iron <clears throat> the ironic thing is, Peter Roy Cock, right, his nickname on EncroChat, because he wants to disguise who he is, is Turbo. Yeah, I'm telling you. Right, I can't believe it, right? I was reading the um, court reports, right, when he got arrested, and it said um, on EncroChat, Peter Roy Cock's um, nickname was, or he or his pseudonym was Turbo. I thought, fucking that's a liberty in it. I should copyright that so he can't use it. Anyway, right, it's true. Yeah, true story. You can go and check it out. Right, it's all there, right? You've only got to Google it. So anyway, right, Peter Roy Cock, right, sees, right, the proof of life in the New York Times, right? So he now knows that he knows what he's got to look for. Well, not him, right? He gets arrested at the beginning of July. Right, there's a massive, right, the police, the Dutch police, right, hundreds of them, right, they're all, they're all different places, right, they, they hit the um, um, Amersfoort, um, Peter Cox Transport Company, they hit his house, they seize a Ferrari, a, a Lamborghini, and all kinds of other things, right, drugs they find, and um, weapons, firearms, and all kinds of things, no sign of the, um, right, right, well, no, not, 
no sign of the Van Gogh, right? They, they ain't even looking for uh, They didn't know he, he didn't even have it then, right? So Peter Roy Cock now, right, he's arrested. He's remanded, right, to jail, right? He's charged with drug importation and, like, like you know, a litany of charges, indictments, right? He's now in jail. He sees the um, Van Gogh in the New York Times, right? So now he knows what's on the back of the painting. So he gets his people on the outside, right, who represent him, right, to speak to Arthur Brand, right, and Arthur Brand organises the sale of the Van Gogh from Lauren to Peter Roy Cock for 400,000 euros, okay? So then what happens, right, is that the, the um, is Niles Minara parts with the Van Gogh to Arthur Brand. He gives it to... Uh, Peter Cox representatives, right? Now, I, um, I don't know whether it was actually... Uh, now, Peter Roy Cock has got a lawyer called Christian Flockstra. Now, I don't know whether he actually took physical um, possession of the Van Gogh, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's all wrapped up and it's in Christian Flockstra's uh, lawyer's office in the safe or in the bank, and, he's, and, he, and he doesn't know what it is. It's wrapped up, and Peter Cox said, just hold that. Right, and he's got it, right? So it's, it's hiding in plain sight, right? I can't be certain about that, but do you know what I mean? That's the sort of thing that I think would happen. 400,000 euros gets paid, right? The Van Gogh now is in the possession of Peter Roy Cock via his proxies on the outside, right? The 400,000 gets divvied up between um, Niles Minara, Octav Durham, Arthur Brand, and Michel Van Rijn. So now Arthur Brand, right, he's established, right, he had a long uh, relationship with Martin Finkelberg, right, the um, Dutch art cop who's now retired, right, but he's number two, Richard Brunswick has taken over. So now this is like June, uh, July 2020. So, he, so now Arthur Brand goes to see Richard Brunswick and says, Richard, I think I can recover the Van Gogh, right, that everyone wants to recover, Right, but there's going to be some conditions. The man who's got it, right, is a drug dealer. He's in jail and he wants a lower prison sentence, right, guaranteed if he hands it back. Plus, he wants, um, um, plus, Arthur Brown wanted immunity where he didn't have to say who he got it off, who he spoke to, where it come from, or anything like that, right? Okay, and it, right, and so, um, right, and, um, and so then... Bronswick, Richard Bronswick, then goes to the Minister of Justice, Ferdinand Grapperhas, right, in the Netherlands, and says, look, we got a chance to get the Van Gogh back, but this Peter Roy Cock, who's in jail, right, wants a lower prison sentence because he did it. He didn't steal it, knows nothing about the theft, right, but he has now bought it for €400,000, and he's prepared to hand it back if we promise him a lower prison sentence. Well, Ferdinand Grapperhas, the Minister of Justice, says, no, 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 I'm not having none of that, right? This is a setup. This is a steal and return. And if we allow this to happen, it's just going to open the floodgates, right? And then all of a sudden, everyone's going to be at it. So then Richard Brunswick goes back to Arthur Brand and says, well, I've got some bad news for you, Arthur. Um, the Minister of Justice will not allow um, any deals for lower prison sentences because it'll encourage further art theft. Um, and so we can't have any kind of deal on this, right? So then Arthur Brand thinks, oh dear, what am I going to do now? So then he goes back and he's undeterred, right? Now he wants to recover the Van Gogh for the finale of his season two TV series that's coming out in September 2020. So then what he does, right, is um, he goes back, right, to Niles Manara, and Octav Durham and Michel Van Rijn, and he says, well, we've got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. He said, we got a problem. He said, I can't recover it because they say, I don't get immunity, right, and they're not going to give any time off to Peter Roy Cock. He said, but I said, I've got another idea. So then Niles Minara says, well, how about the um, Franz Holes laughing boys down in Leedham, right? Now, he said, the museum, it's already been stolen twice, he said, but it's quite easy. He said, I can smash my way in nick it, right, steal it, right, he said, uh, um, and then what we'll do is we'll give Peter Roy Cox people the Franz holes to, to hold on to, we'll get the, the Van Gogh back, right, because then Peter Roy Cox has got his 400,000 euros covered by the Franz holes instead of the Van Gogh, 
and then Arthur Brown can recover the Van Gogh, not ask for any reward, not ask for any kind of prison reduction, right? All he wants is just immunity, right? And then he can film the recovery, and then the grand finale of season two, September 2020, is going to be Arthur Brown recovering the Van Gogh, and he's the hero, right? And then Octav Durham's going to be with him, and he's going to be the hero. So anyway, right, so they then conspired to do that. So in the August of 2020, right, now we're up to 30 minutes, so this is going to be a long one, right? I might have to split it up, right, maybe into two. So anyway, August 2020, right, Niles Minara goes down to Leedham, right, with a couple of the young lads that Octav Durham provides, right, and they're on the back of the motorbike, they go there, boom, he goes over the wall, he goes into the museum, right, smash, bang, crash, bang, wallop, takes... Franz Hull's laughing, boys, for the third time on the motorbike, he gets away, right? All over the headlines the next day, right? All over, all round the world again, right? Holland's been hit again, right? The Netherlands has been hit again. Franz Hull's, it's worth more than the Van Gogh. Now, I think the, Van, uh, the Franz Hull's is probably worth about $20 million. Right, now, the insurance company, right, have had to pay out on the Van Gogh because even though it was owned by the Groningen, Groningen Museum, it was on loan to the Lauren Museum, right? And there was a, a proper full insurance policy. So they've had to pay out $10, $12 million already on the Van Gogh. So now the insurance company, right? Squeaky bum time. The London syndicates, right? In the boxes at Lloyd's, right? They've just taken a $12 million hit. They don't like that, right? Oh, obviously not, right? So they want it back at any price, right? The Dutch authorities are not letting the, this be a handback, right? And they're not letting any money be paid. But now, there's now two paintings stolen. So now, Niles Minara has got the, um, <clears throat> has got the Franz Holes. The Van Gogh is now in the custody of proxies of Peter Roy Cock, who's in jail on the drugs charges. And then Arthur Brand then goes back, right, to um, Richard Bronswick, right, the current serving top Dutch art cop, right, and says, listen, new plate, new deal. Right, now, um, I can get the Van Gogh back. Peter Roycock doesn't want any um, lower jail sentence, right, or anything like that. No reward, no nothing. All I want is just immunity from prosecution, right, that I don't have to say who I got it off, where I got it, how I recovered it or whatever. You know, I'll film it and all that, and I'll just, it'll be a case of me just going to a location and I'll discover it in a box or something like that under a tree, like the um, Picasso which is another story, the Saudi Shakes Picasso. Now, <clears throat> Richard Bronswick then goes back to the Minister of Justice, Ferdinand Grappahas, right, and says, New Deal Arthur Brand is offering now. He's offering to recover the Van Gogh with no strings attached, right, with no, um, no strings attached, right, um, no reward, no lower prison sentence for Peter Roycock, right? All Arthur Brown wants is immunity that we can't, we don't have to ask him where he got it, right? Um, or anything like that. And he's going to film the recovery. His TV series has started, right? Remember, the Franz Holes gets st stolen on the Thursday before his TV series starts the following Tuesday, in the uh, end of August, beginning of September, right? And it's now, his series is going to go for six episodes. So the Van Gogh was actually meant to be the first episode, right? A big splash that Arthur Brands recovered the Van Gogh if the first plan back in July had worked, right? And Ferdinand Grappa has signed off and said, yeah, okay, Peter Roycock can have a lower jail sentence and Arthur Brand can recover the Van Gogh. But he said no. So what they did is they pushed the Van Gogh episode. Instead of being episode one, it was going to be episode six, so they had a few weeks to get this sorted. <coughs> Excuse me. So what happens next, right, is that um, Richard Bronswick goes to Ferdinand Grappahas, right, and says, now the new deal, Arthur Brand, give him immunity. That's all he wants. No rewards, no lower prison sentence, and the Van Gogh comes back. Well, Ferdinand Grappahas hit the roof, right? He went, no. He said, no. He said, we're being played here. He said, this is literally, this is extortion. He said, now we've got two paintings that have been stolen. He said, no, we're not having no deals whatsoever. If Arthur Brown recovers the Van Gogh, we want to know where he got it and who he got it off. And if he doesn't give us that, we will arrest him. Right, we've had enough of this. 
So then Richard Brunswick goes back to Arthur and says, Arthur, I'm awfully sorry, mate. I tell you what, it's um, it's looking bad. Ferdinand Grappahas, right, has hit the roof. He's not too happy. He said, we started off with one painting stolen, and now we've got two. He said, there's no deal, no nothing at all. And if you recover the Van Gogh or the Franzos, right, without telling the police where you got it from or setting up a sting or something like that, right, if you don't tell them that, right, you will be arrested yourself. So Arthur Brand thinks, oh, shit, what am I going to do? So he goes back to Niles Manara and says, no, we can't have the deal, right? They're not going to stand for it. So Niles Manara, right, and Arthur Brand then sell the van... The Franz Holes Laughing Boys, Franz Holes Laughing Boys, they sell that to Peter Roy Cock for a further 600,000 euros. Right, so now Peter Roy Cock is in jail and he's got the Van Gogh owing him 400,000 euros. He's got the Franz Holes Laughing Boys owing him 600,000 euros. So he's got the two paintings owing him a million euros. The money gets paid, right, and then it gets divvied up between Niles Minara, right, Octav Durham, Michel Van Ryan, and Arthur Brand. So then we get to the end of Arthur Brand's series, right, where he's made all these fake recoveries and paid off criminals and got money off insurance companies um, and broken all kinds of laws in UK and all over the place, right? Oscar Wilde's Ring, the Iranian Book of Poems, lots of stuff, right? He's broken, and I've spoken about it before, and we can go through that another time. So we come to episode six, right, of um, Kutz Detective, right? That's what his TV series in the Netherlands. It's all in Dutch, right? So, and, and it's not subtitled, right? So, um, the only subtitles is when someone who's speaking English, right? Then it goes subtitles in Dutch. Right, so there's no subtitles on it, right? So anyway, episode six is still the Van Gogh, right? But all of a sudden, he left a bad taste in the mouth and the episode didn't go down very well with the Dutch public, let alone the Dutch police, right? Now, there's one police officer in the Netherlands, right, who's really got the ump with all this, right? His name's Andy Craig, right? Now, Andy Craig, right, he's an ex-Dutch Special Forces, right? Now, I mean, literally, right? You know, he's, he's got a great big scar on his arm, right? His forearm, right? I imagine it's a battle scar, right? But he was special forces, Andy Craig, right? Now, he's the director of intelligence of the Dutch police, and he was the one who cracked the Encro chat. Well, his team cracked the Encro chat, right? And so they've arrested hundreds of criminals all around the world because they cracked the Encro chat, the Dutch, right? And it was Andy Craig's team. Now, I reached out to him, right, and he's not fucking at me about this, right, at Arthur Brand and this this Dutch art crime cartel, right? He's not at me at all, right, and he's just but he's just about biding his time. I mean, they keep their cards close to their chest because he's a, he's a director of intelligence, right, Andy Craig, right? So he don't fucking reckon Arthur Brand, right, or Michel Van Ryan, or Niles Minara, or Octav Durham, right? Now, or even Richard Brunswick, to be honest with you, Right, you know, because there's only two choices. Richard Brunswick is either corrupt or he's naive. It's, it's one or the other, right? Anyway, and going from the history of Martin Finkelberg, right, pragmatic or corrupt, right, I think a bit of both. So anyway, at, um, so now, right, um, the two paintings, right, Peter C Roy Cock has got control of them. Niles Minara has paid. This is, this is like um, September, October 2021, right? No, sorry, 2020. Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself, right? This is like October 2020, right? So then the money's divvied up, right? You have Christmas 2020. We move into 2021, and I start hooting, right? Going, I know that this is all a fucking setup, and this is all bollocks. And I started putting stuff up on Twitter, and they went potty, right? And, and they started attacking me. And then in the April of last year, 2021, is when Niles Minara gets arrested. Peter Roy Cotton is still in jail, right? He should have been up for his trial, Right, um, about a year after we, he got arrested, so that would have been like, like last July, August, or September of last year. But he still hasn't even been up now, right? And it's now nearly April, right? Uh, Friday's April the first, right? April first, Fool's Day, but it's April, right? So, and so May, June, July. It's only three months away from him being two years since he was arrested, right? And his trial ain't come up, right? Because there's a massive scream on some of the evidence. Um, his lawyers. Christian Flockstra and other lawyers are all getting together about this Encro chat 
um, cracking the encryptions and that, and they're saying they think it's illegal. And if that gets proved to be illegal, like 60% um, of the evidence against Peter Roy Cock and hundreds of other people will be thrown out. Now, whether they've got enough to still get a conviction, that remains to be seen. And that's why they're delaying the trial, right? Because they want to know, right, um, whether these um, Encro chats and the information they gleaned from that when they broke the code, right, did they do it legally or was that done illegally, right? So then that's why that's happened, right? So anyway, now, Peter Roy Cox still in jail. And then last September, September 21, right, Niles then gets eight years. Now... We're moving through September, October, November, December of 2021, right? We now move into 2022, right? And then when they're talking about it in the press, right, what's happened to you, right? The insurance company, right? And it's probably his cops, right? Because then, um, and then it's the London syndicates, right? In their boxes at Lloyd's, right? What they've done, right? They have taken a $12 million hit on the Van Gogh, right? From the Lauren Museum that was on loan from Groningen Museum. And they've taken a 15 to 20 million dollar hit, right, on the um, on the Franz Holes. Because in the Niles Manara trial, it came out, right, and they were still trying to play it down. But there's about 18 million dollars he's got a, um, an order against him that he owes for these paintings, Niles Manara, right? So now what's going to happen, right, or what they've been trying to do is they've been trying to let things die down and settle down. Now, today is the two year anniversary of the Van Gogh theft being um, carried out by Niles Manara. Octav Durham, Arthur Brandon, Michelle Van Ryan, right? And there's nothing in the papers. There's no media about it or anything like that. And what they're hoping to do now, right, is now, um, is um, if Peter Cock comes up um, in court, right, and he can't have a deal and they won't have a deal with anything, right, um, and then he's lumbered with the two paintings, right, um, that he's got put away, right, and he can't do anything with them, Right, what, um, right, he might try and offer one back, right, as a test balloon, right, like the Van Gogh, and say, I'll give you that one back and we'll have a deal. And if you try to not fulfil your part of the deal, you won't get that, the Franz Holes back. So he's always, so he's got two paintings. He can hand one back as a test, test balloon. And if they don't keep their work, the word, the Dutch authorities, he's still got the Franz Holes. Or if the authorities say, no, we're not having none of that, right, because we're not staying it, but it's no more. You're not getting a, um, a day off your prison sentence if you hand back both of the pictures. If that happens, right, then what will happen is Arthur Brand, right, will be quietly, and he's hoping this will go all quiet. And then he will make an approach to the insurance company via probably Dick Ellis, right, um, that if they can recover the Van Gogh and the Franz Holes, Okay, right, then the insurance company will pay money out like they did on the Saudi Sheikh Picasso. On the Saudi Sheikh Picasso, his cox paid out over a million dollars. They gave $600,000 US to Dick Ellis, right, and it was paid into a company, right, that was opened by Dick Ellis, right, and the money went back to, to criminals in the Netherlands and elsewhere. And then when they recovered the Saudi Sheikh Picasso, right, they... um. Uh, Dick Ellis took it back to London and he got paid at 10% of the original insurance claim of $4.5 million. So he got another $450,000. Okay, so then there was a million and fifty thousand dollars plus expenses. About, about $1.2 million was paid back by the insurance company to get the Picasso back. And then what they did is they then gave it back to the Saudi Sheikh's family and the Saudi Sheikh's family paid back the original $4.5 million dollars right, that was owed, and they might have even, right, given Hiscock some of the expenses about recovering it, but I've even covered the 1.2 million they paid via Dick Ellis to the criminals and Arthur Brand, right, to recover the Picasso, right, so the, so the Saudi Sheikh's family might have paid back 5.2 million dollars, more than they got paid out, and you might think, why they do that? Well, the, the Picasso is now worth 70 million dollars, seven zero. $70 million, or the last one of that series sold for $68 million. So now the Saudi Sheikh's family have got the Picasso back, worth $68 or $70 million. They paid back $4.5 million original insurance claim, may have paid back the $1.2 million that Hiscock spent recovering it, right? And now Hiscock's have got that back, that one sorted. So now on this case, right, they've got a, a hit for about um, 20 25 million dollars 
right? So they'd be happy to pay back 10% of that, right? Or if Chris Marinello was on the case, he'd want 20%. Well, Dick Ellis would do it for 10%, right? So that's two and a half million dollars. Now, what they're hoping that they, they can do is that when it all goes quiet, that all of a sudden, at some stage, some time, some place, somewhere, right, Arthur Brand can, can recover this and, and literally... Arthur Brand, someone will phone him on a burner phone, right, with a scrambled voice, and he'll record it all, and they'll t tell him to go to a location, and he'll go and recover the Van Gogh, and then it'll all be in the news and everything, right, and then payments will be made, right, and then the Franz Holes will come back, right, and in the same way, and then payments will be made, and then what will happen with that money is that money will be distributed, right, um, the mil a million dollars will have to go back to Peter Roycock because that's what he paid and he might want interest. A chunk of that money will be put aside for Niles Minara, who's serving eight years, right? And then Arthur Brand, Octave Durham and Michelle Van Ryan, okay, might get some, and Dick Ellis, well, Dick Ellis would demand 10% for himself, right? Um, he won't give a part, he won't part of a shilling. But that's what the plan is going to be going forward. Right now, trust me. Right, so that's what's going to happen. Right, and if um, and they're just waiting for the dust to settle before they can attempt to do that. Right. Well, you know, um, the moral aspect of it, right, is that Arthur Brand concocted this whole thing to steal the Van Gogh to hand it back. Right. Okay, just so that he could get publicity for his season two. Right, um, Kunst Detective. TV series, right? He wants to be the hero. You know, like them fire people, what they call them, pyromaniacs. They set light to a building, right? And then they're the one that calls the fire brigade or they're the one that discovers it. And then they're the hero, right? And then sometimes he's arsonists. I think that's what they call them, arsonists, right? Arsonists set light to something and then they go back and stand in the crowd because they get off on it or something, right? But that's what's happened here. Arthur Brand has organised the theft of the Van Gogh originally, Right, in the um, mark today, 30th of March, 2020, right, he now wants to recover it. He's got the proof of life in the June with Nina Siegel in the New York Times. He wants to recover it, film it, and then it's the episode that, that launches season two. But the authority stepped in, right, and said, no, we're not having it. So then what to try, he tried again, gets Niles Minara to seal Franz Holes laughing, boys, right, and then tries to use that to, um, to free up the Van Gogh so he can hand it back for no... For, uh, for no money or anything like that, right? But then authorities wouldn't stand for it. Another thing that's happened, right, in the last few weeks, right, Arthur Brand has gone dark, right? Now, we all know that Arthur Brand's a media hound, right? And he's um, addicted to uh, the media, right? They say the most dangerous place, right, in the world is the six foot in, in between a camera and Arthur Brand, Right? A movie camera and half a brand. The six feet in between is the most dangerous place in the world, even more dangerous, right, than Ukraine. Right, he's a media hound, right, half a brand. Right, so he's gone quiet. Now, what happened, right, he's got a very close friend called Mick Van Welly, who's a crime reporter, right, famous in the Netherlands, right, he's got his own TV series, and he's a number one reporter and all this, right, and, and he was going to write a book about the Van Gogh theft. And he even came out and said that in the press and on Twitter. Well, a few weeks ago, right, he worked for D-Telegraph, right? D-Telegraph, right? Uh, painting his, uh, uh, sorry, newspaper. Big newspaper in the Netherlands. And he's got his own TV show. Well, a few weeks ago, right, at the end of February, or in February, right, he mysteriously, right, um, left his job. He's been suspended because lots and many, many women have come forward and accused him of sexual abuse, making rude and lurid comments, right? And, 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 and even worse things, right? You know, sexual assault and all this kind of disgusting behaviour. So Mick Van Welly is now, right, he's now gone dark, right? And he's not given interviews or anything like that, right? His Twitter's been dead since like the 5th of uh, February or something like that. He hasn't put nothing up there. And Arthur Brand's gone quiet, right? Really quiet, right? He's very, very rarely puts a, twi a tweet up on Twitter. Now, that's either because of a few reasons, right? Maybe he's caught up in the Mick Van Welly sex scandal, sexual abuse, right? Because they're big, you know, they're, they're close friends and some of this sexual abuse occurred in bars where they go out for a drink and all that and they're, and they're being rude to women and all that, saying 
really disgusting things. Now, you can see Arthur Brandy could do that if he has a few too many drinks or something like that. Okay, I know he comes across as he tries to be Inspector Clue, so floppy hair, right? But he's cool and calculated, and he can be very vicious and nasty. And so if he has too many drinks, right, all of a sudden, you know, uh, you can imagine him being um, sexually abusive to women. You, you, you know, you can see that. You know that, right? So he might be involved in that, right? And so he wants to keep his head down. The other reason, right, could be that the, 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 the walls are closing in, right, on the Van Gogh and the Franz Holes thing, right? And also, a few weeks ago, six, a couple of months ago, right, Arthur Brand recovered this bronze, Roman bronze of Bacchus, you know, right, the god Bacchus, right, Roman bronze, right, that had been stolen in France, right, in 1973, right, and it was worth a lot of money, millions, right. Now, he's recovered it because he came up with a load of lies. He said that an Austrian dealer contacted him to check the provenance on the thing, on the painting, right? Well, a two minute search, a two second search on Google, right, would have found that it come from a museum in the south of France, uh, sorry, in France in 1973. Okay, now what happens when he recovered it? In France, there's an anomaly in French law that, that whoever's the possessor of stolen property, right, is entitled to be compensated if they bought it in good faith. They don't get to keep it, right? But they can, they, they've got, they can be compensated. So the um, town officials, where fr where this museum is, where this Roman bronze was stolen, have raised money, and then Arthur Brand went to these auctioneers who auction antiquities, and some of them are dodgy, right? That have been looted, right? Timeline auctioneers, I think they are, right? Two get two men in the UK, and they put up a chunk of money. Right, for compensation for this alleged mysterious Austrian collector. Well, the truth of the matter is, right, is that the Roman bronze Bacchus was bought by William Bill Verres, right, who's a known smuggler of antiquities and a godfather in the looted and antiquities world, right, who's facing charges in Spain and Italy over smuggling and looted art, um, antiquities, right. He had it, right? He bought it knowingly stolen donkeys years ago, right? And he's the one who's going to get the compensation, right? Now, he lives in the UK, right? Now, the auctioneers, Timeland auctioneers, they're in Harrods, right? They're in the UK as well. So they've now paid money, right, via Arthur Brand, right, to this alleged Austrian collector, but we know it's William Bill Verres. That's against British law. So them two blokes, right, them two Timeline auctioneers, right, I've got their names, you can go and check it out. Anyway, Arthur Brand recovers Bacchus Roman bronze, right? It's BBC, it's all over the place. A couple of months ago it was, right? But it was an illegal buyback. And and, it's, and people have broken the law, right? The two auctioneers, timeline auctioneers, have broken UK law, Proceed to Crime Act um, 2002 and the 1968 uh, Theft Act, sections 22, 23 on retention, right? They've broken the law. Right, so I'm wondering whether that's being investigated and whether this is a straw that's broke the camel's back and the authorities are starting to close in on Arthur Brand. Because of all these recoveries he's been making over the last sort of decade, right, it's one of them's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back and then they're going to fall down like dominoes because they're going to look back and go, yeah, well, that one there and that one there and that one there and that one there. Illegal recovery, illegal recovery, illegal recovery, right, buybacks. Right now, so I don't know what's happened, but Arthur Brand has been very, very quiet. Now, since I started my podcast, right, obviously he's not really happy about that. Well, none of them are. And I mean, now he's announced that he's going to start a podcast as well, Arthur Brand, right, Mr. Copycat, right? Well, go ahead, be my guest. With me, as I said before, I've got a $10 webcam, a face down so the microphone picks up my voice, a press record, and off I go, right? We're 53 minutes and 32 seconds in, right? This is a long podcast, right? Well, it's the Van, the Van Gogh one and the Franz Holes. So that's where we are with them, right? Now, okay, so Peter Roy Cock has got concurrently got control of them, but they owe him a million euros. He wants to hand them back for a lower jail sentence, right, if he gets a guilty. His lawyers are fighting to get all the evidence um, obtained by cracking the Encro chat encrypted phones thrown out of court, right? Now, once that gets resolved and then Peter Cock goes to um, um, his drug trial, okay, that's when you might get the offer. There was an offer when he went to court before and authorities went, no, not only will we not deal with the Van, um, uh, on the Van Gogh and Franz holes, 
we want to know, we're going to prosecute Peter Roycott for handling them. And then Christian Fluxtree, his lawyer, right, pedaled back and went, no, 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 my client doesn't know nothing about the Van Gogh theft or anything like that. This is just rumour. There's no proof about any of that, right? But I still maintain, right, that, that Peter Roycott got one of his proxies on the outside to wrap up the Van Gogh in an envelope, right, because it's only envelope size, right, in a box, right, sealed it all up and has given it to Christian Flockstra, who genuinely don't know what it is, right, just thinks it's documents, and he's put it in the um, lawyer's firm safe, or it's in the bank, right, and it's because it's, it's property belonging to his client, Peter Roycock, and then when he gets instructions to hand it back, right, it'll be handed back. But he's, he's got the thing called plausible deniability, Christian Flux, because he can just say, I was given this package and told there was documents in it, important family documents of Peter Roy Cock, when in truth and reality it's the Van Gogh. That's what I think, right? The Franz Holes, right, is obviously wrapped up and it's just hidden somewhere behind the wardrobe or, or wherever it is, in one of the numerous houses, right, in the Netherlands somewhere, or it might be up in Belgium, right, I mean, or even France, you, you know, because the Netherlands where it is and Europe and all that, you can go cross-border, okay, so now he will offer him back when he gets to trial, if he looks like he's going to get a long time in jail, right, 12, 15 years, right, and then if they say no, then what will happen to be Arthur Bram will then move to the next stage, which will be trying to recover him in the way that he recovered the Saudi Picasso, right, now the insurance companies in London, right, they've taken a 20, 25 million dollar hit, right, so they want these two paintings back so they can get their $25 million back, right? The Dutch nation, the, the Dutch authorities and the government, the um, His Majesty, the King, right? everyone, right? All the diplomatic circle, right? They all want the, the, they want the um, Franz Hals laughing boys back because it's a national treasure and they want the Van Gogh back as well because that's a national treasure as well, but less so than the Franz Hals laughing boys, Okay. There's 20, $25 million on the line, right? Now, normally, the insurance companies will be happy to pay 10%, right? But sometimes 20%, right? Which is the going rate now, 20%. But because this is such a high-profile case and large amounts, Dick Ellis would do it for 10%. Chris Marinello would want 20%. He'd want $5 million, right, to recover them, right? And Chris Marinello wouldn't share any of that with anything, anyone else, right? He'd want it all himself, right? And that's why no one speaks to him. So that's um, the Van Gogh anniversary, right? Uh, two years since Van Gogh was stolen from the Lauren, uh, Mu the Lauren Museum by Niles Minara, part of the conspiracy with Arthur Brand, Octav Durham and Michel Van Ryan, and in some respects, the Dutch art cop Richard Bronswick, right? And also, don't forget Martin Finkelberg, although he's retired, right? He's still advising Arthur Brand and he's still talking, right? So we don't have to... Um, he hasn't got the burden of office. But you can see what a web of deceit is, right? Now, I discovered this, right, years ago. Right, I discovered this, right, before anyone else did, right? And I've just come out with it all. And I'm hoping that the Dutch police, right, are not sitting on their laurels, right? And if Andy Craig's got anything to do with it, right, it won't. All of a sudden, one day, they'll swoop on Arthur Brand, right? He'll be arrested, right? And they'll throw loads of charges at him. Right, now, um, uh, the, the reporting in, in, in the Netherlands, right, I'm not sure how it works, right, but he'll be known as Arthur B, I suppose, and everyone will know it's him. Anyway, this is near 58 minutes, it's nearly an hour, right, and it's uh, Art Hostage, episode 40, 40, episode 40, Art Hostage podcast, right, and it's called um, Van Gogh from Lauren, Franz Hals from Leadham, right, update, 30th of March 2022, and we're going to see what's happening next. And stay tuned, there's a lot more coming. Right, Art Hostage, over and out.